Welcome to another edition of ProSoft Technology Video Training. The PLX51 DF1 ENI router is designed to aid in the process of integrating newer hardware platforms that support Ethernet IP to existing DF1 networks. The PLX51 router can facilitate peer-to-peer -peer communications between PLCs or SCADA systems on Ethernet and DF1, as well as enable uploading and downloading programs to those PLCs for those platforms. If peer-to-peer -peer functionality is all you need for your application, we also offer the PLX51 DF1 MSG Messenger, which is only for peer-to-peer -peer communication. Today we'll be setting up the PLX51 gateway to allow us to upload and download to an SLC controller on a DF1 network from a PC over Ethernet. To do this, we'll go through the first time setup and configuration for the PLX51 DF1 ENI router in bridge mode. This mode is specific only to the DF1 router version of the gateway. We have other videos that cover the configuration for other modes available on the DF1 messenger as well as the DF1 router. So we'll be covering downloading and installing ProSoft PLX50 configuration utility software, creating a new project for our gateway, configuring the PLX51 for both the EIP and DF1 networks, and uploading the PLX51 EDS file from the gateway in RS links. Let's begin. The first thing that we need to do is download and install the ProSoft PLX50 configuration utility software from the ProSoft technology website. This is a free application that is used to configure the PLX51 module and will allow you to do all the necessary configurations and mapping to make the module an integral and useful part of your program. Once we have the files downloaded, install the PLX50 configuration utility to your PC by following the prompts. When it's done, we'll open up the configuration utility and open a new project. The first time you connect the PLX51 to your network, you'll need to launch the DHCP server and assign it an IP address on your subnet. It's this button here in the menu bar, and there is our gateway. Click Assign, and on the window that opens, I'll enter in an IP address that I know is available on the local network, and click OK. The bar should turn green. This lets you know that the gateway has accepted the IP address and is now connected. So we can close this window. Next, right click on the new project under the Project Explorer and select Add. On the Add New Device window, select the DF1 router and click OK. We then come to the main configuration window. You can see that we have five tabs at the top. The general and serial DF1 tabs encompass the basic configuration for the gateway, and the other tabs will only be enabled depending on what mode you select. On the general tab, you can give the gateway an instance name and a description if you like. You then enter the IP address. Click the Browse button to the right of the address field to bring up the target browser, where you can see all the PLX50 gateways on your network. Select your DF1 module. It will have the IP address that you just assigned. Click OK and the IP will appear in the address field. We then come to the operating mode selector. With the DF1 router, we have four modes to choose from. I'll set my gateway to bridge mode. That's all we need to do here. Moving on, we'll click on the serial DF1 tab. This is where we configure the DF1 side of our gateway. It contains all the typical DF1 network settings. You want everything to match the settings of the DF1 device that you're connecting to. So for protocol, I'll select full duplex, baud rate will be 9600, parity will be none, I'll set the error detection to CRC, embedded responses, uh, retry limits and timeouts, just set to whatever you need. The reply message wait is intended for situations where some older legacy controllers. If the response comes back too quickly, they'll miss it. So you can add a slight delay to responses to ensure that the controller is able to process it. I'll just leave it at 50 milliseconds. There are a few other options available. Node address is relevant for certain modes where it's possible for the module to appear as more than one node. Uh, enable store and forward is only relevant if you're using the DF1 radio modem protocol. 
So that does it for the general configuration. We can now move on to the bridge tab and go through the configuration options for this mode. For this video, we're only going over the configuration needed to be able to access a controller on DF1 from our PC using RS Links. For that, we don't have to do anything else on this tab. There are options here to map DF1 node addresses to different controller paths on Ethernet. There will be another video that covers the configuration options here in greater depth. That's all we need to do for the basic setup in the configuration utility. We'll click the apply button and now the configuration should be ready to download to the gateway. When you're ready, just right click on the PLX51 in the Project Explorer view and select download. The module will receive the configuration and reboot and now is a good time to save your project. For the next step, we'll have to switch over to RS Links, where we will use the PLX51's built-in EDS file so that our gateway will be identifiable and browsable in RS Links. To do this, we simply open up RS Links, choose Communications, and select RS Who. Expand Ethernet IP, we'll locate our gateway, it will appear as an unidentified device, so right click on it and select Upload EDS from Device. Then just follow the prompts to complete the EDS upload. Sometimes, once the upload completes, uh, you may find that RS Links will need to be restarted in order to recognize that the EDS file has been installed. Once you've completed the upload and RS Links can identify the PLX51, you can actually browse the DF1 port and access any devices that it's connected to. If all the configuration information was entered properly, your DF1 PLC should show up. And there is my slick controller. From here, you can add the controller to your RS Logics 500 program and upload and download configurations to it. As mentioned at the beginning, we have more videos covering other configuration modes for various applications. If you have any questions or would like more information about the PLX51 DF1 ENI Gateway, use the link in the description to go to its product page or feel free to give us a call. Happy training!